J is back at it here to give everyone another Dexter Season 1 episode review video. Before I get into that though, pretty important if you're not caught up to the point where I am. If you're re-watching or watching Dexter or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative and pay attention to the episode's title, which of course I'll mention as well as put in the description for you if that happens to be the case. And you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. Is anybody getting tired of that spiel that I give before every video? This would be Dexter Season 1, Episode 10. The title of this episode is called Seeing Red. This will be my review, reaction, recap after just finishing watching the episode. And this episode was much better than Father's know, Father Knows Best, in my opinion. So we start off with Dexter making breakfast, getting the kids ready for school, new locks and reinforced strike plates at Rita's place. And then at Miami Metro, there is a jar of blood that's sent to the station. And inside that jar of blood, there is a key to a hotel room that was delivered. So Deb and Dokes go to visit the hotel and find a room completely covered in blood. Crazy. Obviously, Dexter is the first one sent to investigate and Doke says it's your wet dream in there, which is fucking hilarious. I believe that's what he said. And uh, when seeing the blood-covered uh, room, it brings back a uh, a repressed memory from his childhood, uh, sitting in a pool of blood at the age of probably three, causing Dexter to kind of fall down and uh, when he gets back up, he runs from the scene. And when he comes out of there, like, he's all covered in blood. And Deb's like, what's up, dude? Or not what's up, dude, but she's like, what happened? And, oh, I'm just a little lightheaded. And Dokes, something finally got to you. You're human after all. <laughs> Hilarious. So the forensic team shows up or finds out that the blood actually came from at least five different victims. Although none are actually in the room, since there were only one set of footprints in the room, uh, based on what they, you know, all the people that were in the room, and then out of all the people that were in the room that worked for the station, they ruled all them out, and there's only one set of prints, the person that put the, uh, put all the blood in there. So they assume that the victims were killed elsewhere, and that their blood uh, spread around the room by the killer, of course. Uh, Deb suggests that the ice truck killer, who has had five body bloodless victims, may be responsible. And obviously, it's her boyfriend, Rudy, the ice truck killer. He's right under her, her nose, but she can't, uh, she can't figure it out, unfortunately. So... While dating a woman in a bar, Batista in the episode sees a prostitute with a prosthetic hand and fingernails painted in the same way as the ice truck killer's first victim. So uh, Batista totally forgets about his date. Well, he doesn't forget about her, but working on a hunch that the killer is a uh, um, whatever the... The phobia is for somebody that likes prosthetic hands. I can't remember what Masuka said. He speaks to Rudy because of Masuka's advice, who's the person that deals with prosthetic body parts. And uh, he doesn't realize it is actually the ice truck killer. Uh, Rudy, of course, cooperates uh, with Batista, realizing uh, he doesn't know really much at all. He's just working on a big hunch. He was potentially going to kill Angel then uh, until he realized that, you know, or Batista didn't really have much to go on. And then later in, I'm just kind of focused on the Batista stuff. At the Towards the end of the episode, uh, Batista is actually stabbed in the parking lot uh, by a masked man who he manages the el elbow in the face before Two other men show up and scare the attacker off. And of course, uh, also Rudy, who had fallen out with uh, Deborah due to secretly having dinner with Dexter. And that, I'll get into more of that later because Deb wanted to have sex and Rudy 
uh, wanted to find out why Dexter had such a hard time at the crime scene. Like, oh, we should go talk to him. I mean, you, you invited me uh, on a couple's getaway sort of thing, and now you don't want me to care about somebody that I bonded with? I, I want to know what's the matter. So Rudy goes and has drinks at Dexter's and kind of blows off Dab well to steak and drinks at Dexter's. But anyway, so he, he tells Deb he is in love with her. And Deb's like, well, 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 wait, what did you say? And they kiss, but Rudy eventually backs away because of complaining of that, that cut lip, uh, suggesting, of course, that he was Angel's attacker, which we know he's already the ice truck killer. So good Good, uh, you can place your bets on uh, him being the one that attacked Angel. So, Rita finds out that Paul is actually pressing charges against her for the assault, for her hitting him with the baseball bat, because he, she did lure him into that room, but I don't, obviously, blame Rita at all for what she did. So, Rita talks with a, a lawyer, which I believe was Malcolm Jamal Warner, if, if memory serves me correctly, who tells her that since she invited Paul into her house, she cannot prove that her intent was to defuse the situation. And then at a hearing, it's actually revealed that Rita violated her and Paul's custody agreement, which is bullshit, making his case against her even stronger so when Paul drops by Rita's to return the children uh, on a night, he th actually threatens Dexter if, uh, you know, that skinny bitch and you get in my way. Uh, Dexter is, like, freaking out during this whole conversation. Like, he's agitated. You could just tell. And it mounts and mounts and mounts, and all of a sudden Dexter grabs a frying pan and clocks Paul over the head with it. So Paul loses consciousness doesn't surprise me. And Dexter drives him back to Paul's hotel room and actually frames him for drug abuse. And then Dexter alerts the police and Paul is sent back to prison uh, with encouragement from Rudy after their conversation, all that. Dexter actually goes back, Dexter actually goes back to the, the hotel room where he relives his repressed memory because Rudy told him that his mother died uh, when he was younger and going to uh, check the mail, like, triggered it one day or something like that. And uh, the murder of his mother, he, he recalls uh, a murder of his mother. Uh, a chainsaw was used to do some damage to his mother and uh, Dexter's just laying there remembering this repressed memory, laying in there in the, the blood-soaked hotel room. And that's that's how the episode ends. So I really actually liked this episode. I said before uh, in other, other videos that I've done or other things related to Dexter or the season ranking of Dexter that my, f my first favorite episode of Dexter was this episode. Now, I'm going to retract that statement. Uh, because the other episodes, there's some of them, the one with the Costellos, um, the, the, I don't remember their names now, but when Jack Dexter killed both of them, that was like the first, like, holy shit, this show's kind of good. But this episode was, just had a lot of interesting moving parts in it, and I really, really enjoyed it. I know I didn't focus a lot on the Rudy going over to Dexter's thing, I kind of quickly explained that. Uh, but I really like the whole hotel room thing and the fact that Dexter, the guy that loves blood and actually really, really likes blood, uh, like freaked out. Like it was too much for him. And then Dokes is like, so I finally got to you. Well, goddamn, you're human after all. Hilarious stuff. So I'm going to score the episode a 9.5 out of 10. That's how much I liked this episode. Um, I mean, I could give it a 10, actually. There's really nothing wrong with this episode, but I'm not going to give it a 10. I'm sure there's something that doesn't make sense. I don't like the whole Paul stuff, but uh, 9.5 out of 10. And since I gave Angel the character of the episode last time, and I was thinking about giving it to him this time, I'm going to give it to Rudy, our friendly neighborhood ice truck killer, because he did a lot of little things in this episode. He, you know, he told Debbie he loved her. He went and had steaks and, you know, alcohol with Dexter and went to pick up his phone at the station when Dexter was in his room trying to figure out a, a blood splatter. So 
You've heard what I had to say. Obviously, now it's your turn. If you're a fan of Dexter, if you're a fan of Dexter New Blood, even if even the finales of each of the series, which I like both of the finales. I know a lot of people don't. I happen to not mind them. Are they perfect? No. But to me, they make sense with what the show is. Um, or if you're a fan of JDev TV and want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, especially during this slow time where in the past 28 days, I'm a minus four on subscriber count. Uh, go ahead and smash that like button. If you know anybody that would be interested in any Dexter content, or if you have a friend that really likes Dexter or Dexter New Blood, or if you want to share the, the, the channel on your social media platforms or the video on your social media platforms, please do so. That would be awesome. Uh, obviously, I want you to sound off in the comment section about your thoughts, your analysis, any little tidbits that you want to talk about regarding the episode. What would you score the episode? Who would be the standout character of the episode? It's going to be Rudy or Angel Batista for sure. If, if Dexter is not the character of the episode in every episode. And then, of course, last but certainly not least, I'm always trying to grow the channel. Um, if you haven't hit that sub, sub, sub blah, 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 blah. if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, please do so. Helps me out. It makes me really want to continue to do this, which I'm still going to do with you which way. But when the channel's more active and busy, uh, it makes me more determined to make better content. Because I know some of the stuff I do is kind of half-assed. Sometimes, not all the time. Um, subscribe to the channel, join the team, show your damn support, and be a part of something special. And JDev will return.